see the sun, I'm rising up, I feel the love now, oh, it's in my vision. You know I ran around, and I got lost, but now I found it, well, I can't shake this feeling. Oh, it's gonna take I feel the love now, oh, it's in my vision. And it's time me run, 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 don't give up. And it's time me run, 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 run. Welcome to the Retirement Learning Lab, where we teach you how to retire without running out of money. My name is Van Richards, and we have a really good show for you today. We have a couple of stocks which are really interesting because both of them are four-star stocks rated by Morningstar. But you're going to see that there is such a big difference in between these two stocks. It's amazing. Well, the day was a really interesting day in the stock market because it started off positive and then it ended off negative. The Federal Reserve made an announcement today that they were going to continue to keep interest rates at 0% through 2023, which is actually really pretty good news because when interest rates go up, costs go up, et cetera, from that standpoint. But then federal uh, the, uh, the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve spoke, and according to sources, he did not really speak very confidently and didn't have good answers. And after he spoke or as he was speaking, the market started to tank and it wasn't off that much. The, the NASDAQ was off a little bit over 1%. The Dow Jones industrials actually eked out again just a little bit. So it wasn't really that bad. One of the stocks that we're going to talk about today was actually one of the big winners of the day, but you're going to see that one day does not make a retirement account. That is so important for you to remember because when we're talking about accounts today and every day, I want to help you to understand that one day is not going to make or break you. You need to structure your investments so that one day is not going to be the end all of everything. So let's get right into talking about the stocks today. And this is the daily NASDAQ stock update. <music> As we do every day, we look at stocks and we look at three different things. The first thing that we look at is we look at the earnings in these stocks. And if they've got good earnings, then they're worth owning. Then we look at the stability of those stocks. How are they going forward? We also look at how are they competing with their with the, the, the companies that are basically out there trying to take their lunch. So when we look at those three things, if the answer to yes comes out to every last one of those three things, then they're a worthy stock to own. Um, but if it falls short, it really makes a question mark from that standpoint. And I think that what you're going to see today is going to be, it's going to teach you a lot. And I hope that in teaching you this, that you understand that if you read you see in the news, and I see this a lot on the different business channels where whatever fund company is out there and they say, hey, we have a four-star fund. Well, four stars does not mean that it's appropriate for you. You need to look at your situation. And really what we're going to see today is we're going to see what's considered a four-star growth, growth stock, and then we're going to see a four-star value stock. And remember, growth is basically the anticipation of what's going to be growing. And then value is going to be based just on earnings. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today, not to bore you too much. It's called EBITDA. So we're going to talk about EBITDA just a little bit today. So the two stocks we're talking about are Liberty Global and then LAM Research. So let's get right into it and see what's going on with these two companies. Okay. The first company, I, I prepared a little bit of an explanation of this, and I hope that you like it. Let me know what you think in the notes, if you would, please. And just tell me how you think this helps, if this does help from that standpoint. So let's take a look. Hold on. Let me get over here to the right spot. Just hang on. Here we go. 
This will give you an explanation of Liberty Global. I think. Okay, it's not going to work. So anyhow, when we look at Liberty Global, Liberty Global has a couple of different types of businesses. They have, it's primarily a wireless and a cable company. In the United Kingdom, it's basically Virgin Media. And Virgin Media is actually getting ready to merge with Telefonica. And that's going to be a big thing that's going to be going on. So let's take a look just a little bit further and see how this is. Now, if we're looking back at what's going on with the with the price of this stock, it's interesting because for a four star stock, it's really undervalued. That's what Morningstar is saying. And I think that you'll see that it's, that it's true. It is undervalued, but you as an investor need to make the decision if it is undervalued enough and its history is going to be profitable at some point in time. I'm just going to come right out there and tell you, I don't think so. And let me explain to you why. If we look at this, what's happened with, uh, with, with this company is that over a period of years, it's been the roll up of a lot of bankrupt companies. Virgin Media was rolled up from a lot of other companies in England that were, that were developing the infrastructure for a cable television system for cable television and for uh, a wireless system. Uh, but some of those companies went bankrupt and they were rolled up into Virgin Media. Virgin Media then was put into part of what you're seeing today. And what you're seeing today is Liberty Global. So it started out the year, let's say that we're going to go back 12 months. It started out on 916 at 2804 and it ended today at 22405. Yeah, they get a couple of uh, half cents in there sometimes. So really for a full year, it's down 20.10%. Now, foreign stocks are a little bit more difficult to do research on. And what we have to look at is we look at something that's called EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And it's really an indicator of the overall profitability of the company. And I'm not going to bore you with the details of it. All I'm going to do is tell you that in 2016, 2017, and 2019, it was negative. They had one positive year. So when I look at those three things that I talked to you about before, which is earnings, competitiveness, and stability, the first one, it's failed. I I would pull this stock out if I was doing a direct index and buying this stock as part of a direct index strategy, this wouldn't meet the grunt test from that standpoint. When I say the grunt test, what I'm saying is I, I set parameters and suggest that you, you consider doing the same thing when you look at stocks, set parameters for this is what I'm going to judge is going to be a good stock. And this is what I'm going to judge is going to be a bad stock where I think a lot of people go bad is when they, they, they put their emotions into it and then they go, wow, it's really gone down so much. It's got to be, it's got to go back up. It's got to go back up. But if they don't have the earnings, it's not going to go back up. And if you look at what's been happening in the history of this stock and actually the, the company that's associated with it, which is Telefonica, you're going to see that the same thing is happening to Telefonica. I don't really understand how they stay in business, but hey, I'm not that far into it. This does not have dividends, so we're not going to get into that part of it. Now, let's look at how this competes. Yeah, one of the three legs of the stool that holds up the, the stock the you know in itself is how does it compete? When we look at Liberty Global and we compare it to other companies that do similar things, we look at Deutsche Telekom and we also look at Telefonica. Telefonica is a Spanish company. Um, you know, okay. Telefonica is actually set to merge with a significant portion of Virgin Media. Now, when we look at Liberty Global, Liberty Global, one of the things in the video that didn't play regretfully in the very beginning is to tell you that Liberty Global is really a conglomeration. It's a holding company of several other companies. The most major company that's in there is Virgin Media, but there is also, there's a Swiss uh, cable company, there's a Belgium telecom, there's a Netherlands company, 
all those companies are added into this, but Virgin Media is the most significant one. But when we look at this, it's kind of interesting. I wanted to compare it also with Comcast here in the United States because Comcast actually has purchased a company called Sky, which is a cable company that's in Great Britain. And they're trying to make their ways into that market. There are some regulatory uh, hurdles for them to get past, but they're still trying to get past that. But let's look at this. Okay, this is where I'm going with this. You got a company like Comcast, Comcast which we've reviewed here before. It's got about a 1.98% dividend. Now watch the dancing cursor. See, this is Telefonica. This is the one that uh, is going to merge with Virgin Media. This company has tanked since the coronavirus market crash. Yes, the coronavirus hit Spain quite a bit more heavily than it did many other countries. It was kind of like Italy from that standpoint, and they have not come back. Um, the problem that's going on right now with Liberty Global um, is it stagnated because of Brexit. And if you look at the the, the blue, they actually came back. They, they, they had earnings that have uh, gotten a little bit better. They've got more subscriptions into their system, which is what happened to right in here. And it's kind of bounced around uh, back and forth over the past couple of months from that standpoint. But the big thing I want to point out in comparing uh, some of the foreign companies with some of the domestic companies like Comcast and Telefonica is Comcast pays that 1.98% dividend. Hello, Telefonica pays 11.97%. You may be going, wow, I want that stock. But before you just buy it based on one factor, which is the dividend, look at the value. Is it worth buying at this point in time? I don't know. Now, you probably don't want to hear that from somebody that's supposed to give you advice. But when I say I don't know, it would be I wouldn't put it in my portfolio. But remember this, the past performance of investments is no guarantee of the future results. And that goes from the negative side and the positive side, too. OK, when we look at the moat that's out there with this company, remember, if you've listened to me before and listen again tomorrow, if you want to get reminded that. The show's coming up. I usually start at five o'clock every once in a while. It's a little bit later today. I did good. I started at five o'clock. But if you want to get a notice and you're listening to me on YouTube, go over and hit the subscribe button. Also, if there's other information that you'd like to hear about stocks, let me know what you want to hear about because I am glad to do the research. I spend part of the afternoon looking this stuff up. And if there's something out there that you want to know about, let me know about it. All right. But I want to tell you about moats. This is what a moat is. And you always thought that a moat was something that kept out the bad people from the castle. Well, it is in a way, but the idea with when we talk about a moat with a company, the moat is the imaginary barrier that they philosophically dig in between themselves and the competition. So when we look at a company like uh, Liberty Global, and we're talking more specifically about Virgin Media, which it's the biggest part of Liberty Global, really. They actually have a cost advantage. And that cost advantage is that they rolled up a lot of those bankrupt companies that were building the cable infrastructure in England and they put together Virgin Media. So they have the infrastructure that's there. And that's actually a good thing because that's a very costly thing to build. So as far as co competitors go, they're doing okay. They have an efficiency of scale that works to their advantage too, along with that infrastructure. Now, when you compare the margins, the profitability of this company to a company like Comcast here in the United States, their margins are significantly less than the, than the companies here in the United States. So that begs to ask the question is, how is Comcast going to treat Sky when they start working more diligently and if it gets past some of the regulatory hurdles for them to get more involved in the uh, British uh, telecom system in itself. So they are a competitor to, to, to for uh, Virgin Media to worry about. Okay, now let's get to the heart of some of this that I've talked about. 
I talk about Morningstar a lot and I respect the information that's there. And I think that you will too, when you start to look at it from this perspective, all they're doing is they're reporting numbers and they're deriving their opinions based on the numbers. So they're, they're fact-based opinions from that standpoint. Um, and when we look at it from that standpoint, we see that the current value of this stock is at 22.405. They're pegging the value at $33 a share. So in reality, they're saying that the stock is undervalued by 26.05%, and that garners them four stars. Now, what are some of the other analysts out there that are saying about this? Now, when I put together the report, I go to a poll of analysts or a pool of analysts, and certain analysts they specialize on specific types of industries. And there are seven analysts that were polled for this, this uh, reserve, this survey in itself. And out of the seven of them, three of them said that it was a strong buy. Two of them said that it was a hold. And actually two of them said, get the heck out of Dodge. This is a strong sell. So where does this average out to be? So really, it actually adds out to be a hold. They're not saying that you should sell everything, but they're not adding to this particular uh, issue either. The majority of analysts are saying that it's a hold. Now, I do want to remind you the same thing I tell you every day. What I'm telling you here is just news. This is an education. This is not a direct recommendation. I'm not saying that if you hold Liberty Global that you should go out and sell it. Um, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a strategy of putting together money in a retirement plan. And part of that strategy is looking at how to select different investments. I would not put this into a retirement plan because um, basically it's not holding up with the three tests numbers that I've given it from the very beginning. So let's keep going on here from this standpoint. Okay, the next company that I want to talk about is Lamb Research. And I really regret that I'm not able to show you the video that I had on this because um, Lamb Research is an interesting company from the standpoint of it's kind of, it's one of a kind. It is going to, you're going to find out in a few moments that it actually has a wide moat. And in the fact that it has a wide moat, the reason that it has a wide moat is because they developed monitoring products for the semiconductor industry. And they have a unique process that's called dry etching. And the dry etching process, what you see here, it's a vacuum uh, type process where they're actually etching the different uh, nodes into a wafer. And the way that they etch it is by bombarding it with the gases, the gases from different uh, substances. And the molecules, the plasma from these, uh, this operation actually lets them remove portions of the wafer. It helps them to be very precise in creating semiconductors. It's a unique process, and I regret that I couldn't show you the video that's here. Yeah, it, it was off. They were off a little bit for the day, but in general, um, the company itself has had a pretty good year. Um, let's look at it from the number standpoint. It's a pricey stock. It's around 228.35. It's not like a Berkshire Hathaway or anything like that, but at 228.35, it's not one of the cheaper stocks that's out there. I'll remind you too that I use a custodian called uh, Folio, and Folio does a very good job of keeping track of and being the custodian for client stocks. And one of the big benefits of using a custodian like Folio is the fact that they let you buy partial shares. So when we put together a portfolio, we could take $100,000 or $10,000 or whatever the number is, and we could buy all 100 stocks of the NASDAQ 100. And even though that we don't have rounded numbers of shares, that's okay because the, the allocation works out because they allow you to have partial shares. So a pricey stock doesn't make any difference at this point in time. The stock ended today at $306.60, which means that for the year it was 34.27% up, 
which is really good. They don't have dividends, but we're going to talk about dividends on the other stocks on the other days. But let's talk about the earnings. The earnings are one of the three pillars that we look of, look at. It's one of the three legs of the stool that hold up a good stock in this. Now, let me make this just a little bit bigger for you if I could, because what I want to do, let's go ahead and look at this, because I want you to recognize that the solid line is going to be the actual earnings per share, and then the dotted line is going to be the estimated earnings per share. And you're going to see that as we go back, we go back even all the way to 2015, it's actually done pretty well. Every single quarter, they have beat the estimates. And they're on track actually to beat estimates going into 2021. So that's actually pretty good from that standpoint. So this, this passes one, actually two of the three the premises that I build for selecting stocks. So earnings are good. Let's keep moving on. Let's look at the third issue, which is competitiveness. How do they compete with other companies that do something similar? Applied materials analog devices and Tokyo Electron are the three other companies that are competitors with LAM Research. Um, and you'll actually see that LAM Research has exceeded all of them. Tokyo Electron has kept up with them and really Applied Materials and Tokyo Electron are the only two companies out there that really, that really are any competition, significant competition for LAM Research in itself. But remember, as we talk about, even as good as it is, the past performance is not a guarantee of the past results. Now, we have to look at what the stability of this company is. And actually, it's very good with LAM Research. Their equipment design gives them cost advantages. And it's really an intangible asset because they designed it. Yes, they do have their, their, their equipment in, I believe, every semiconductor manufacturer throughout the world. So they have a pretty broad base of customers in that. But the intangible aspect of it is they design the equipment. And um, that's one of those things that lasts for a very, very long time. When we look at them going forward, they actually have a diversified business model. There's three parts of it. There's logic, foundry, and memory. And all three of those are, are doing very well from the standpoint of development. So they're doing great. Now, this is actually the big difference that you're going to see. You saw a few moments ago the, the big discount that existed on on. Liberty Global, look at the discount that's here on LAM Research. They have a current price at $306.60 per share, and it is valued right now at $360 per share. And um, the difference that we're seeing in there is about a 14.83% discount. Now, if the numbers don't jive on here, forgive me. Um, I get them from different resources. But as we're looking at it right now, 306.60 with a fair value of 360, uh, that still pegs it at that 14% discount, which actually garners a four-star rating from Morningstar, which is really good. So let's actually see how this stacks up with other analysts. There's 18 analysts that looked at this stock. 12 of them said that it was going to be a strong buy, three as a moderate, three as a hold. So how does that come out to be? That tells us that this is a strong buy. That's what the majority of analysts are telling us on this particular stock, but I got to remind you again that when we look at this stock, the past performance is not a guarantee of the future results. And I'm not telling you to go out and buy it. I'm telling you that other analysts are saying that this is a good buy. There's a delineation in there. Let me explain to you why. Um, I'm a registered investment advisor and I can't give investment advice to you unless I know more about you. So if you want to get my advice directly and you want to talk to me, actually I'll give anybody that wants it 15 or 20 minutes of my time and talk to you about your investment strategies and your questions. Just go over to my website at richardsfinancialplanning.com. If you go down to the schedule a call to learn more button, you can set up a time right there on online and you and I will set up an opportunity to get a chance to talk about anything that you want to concerning your investments and your retirement.
So with all that, I'm going to remind you that if you have questions during the week and uh, you want to ask them, enter them into whatever platform that you're listening to. And with that, I'm going to thank you for listening and I will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you.